I know how tough this fight is going to be. I'm expecting a three-round war. Um, you know, this, the only added pressure I say is uh, I want it to live up to the hype. You know, I don't want it to be a big upset like the Jeremy Stevens fight. I really want the fans to get a fight of the night out of this. I'm expecting the best out of myself, and uh, I definitely don't want to disappoint my boss. You know? How do you make that happen? I mean, obviously, sometimes when you go in expecting a fight to go one way, and like you said, it doesn't, how do you ensure that it does end up being a fight of the night? Well, because I think for me, um, I didn't really play into the hype of everybody wanting it to be a fight of the night. I just kind of took it in stride, and when people made their, their opinions about it, I just kept myself grounded and focused on my task, you know. Um, I know everybody wants to see fire tonight. I do too, you know I mean? It'd be a, a, a rewarding payday. But I'm not thinking about the money right now. I'm thinking about going out and performing to my best that I know how. Um, you know, me and Donald were able to talk quite a bit for this fight. And, um, you know, we, I mean, there's always agreements, but there's always the back, the, the backfall to where the guys, where, um, where the strengths are. And uh, we both agreed to go in there and bang and give, give the fans what they want. You know, it's Donald's hometown, so I know he's going to bring it. So um, I'm just keeping myself grounded and focused on the task. But the biggest task of all is winning, you know. Um, I'm tired of getting close to certain accomplishments and then having setbacks, you know. Uh, right now, my life is built around success, and success starts outside the ring and inside. And I just want to be successful on all this level. You said the last couple fights that you had, you know, there was always title talk and, you know, where does this pull you and are you number one? I guess now it's probably a little bit different after the setbacks. Is that better or worse for you that you don't have to deal with that? It's better. It's better for me because there's no pressure of chasing the title, you know. Five fight win streak, it was fun, you know. Um, but at this weight class right now, I don't think anybody's going to get on a win streak anymore. You know what I mean? The, the, the 155 class, is, the depth chart is so sick. It's, it's about picking the right fights. You know, it's not about getting six fights because I can go and fight six fights and it'd be six squirrels. You know, that doesn't guarantee me a spot. You have to beat the elite to fight with the elite. And um, I've always been considered an elite fighter, but I, I want to make my staple in, in the career. I want to put my mark on it in this weight class. You know, a lot of guys, they switch from weight class to weight class. It's not my thing. You know, I'm a 55er. It's just the best weight class for me. I know I can win at 55 and I know I can be a 55 champion. So I'm going to just keep grinding, man. And, I mean, there's going to be other setbacks along the way. I know it is. I mean, that's life. But I'm expecting it. How does that picking fights work for you? You said on the conference call, one thing I wanted to clarify is that you said what you said now, that you want to pick fights and you're not the same thing about winning streaks. The fights matter, not the streak. But you're also a guy who's, who, who prides himself on never turning down fights. So does that mean that you're in a spot in your career where you might start turning down fights and trying to pick your opponents? No. No, I won't never say no to a fight. Um, I, I, I come to the conclusion I think a lot of fights, uh, when when I'm offered a fight and maybe it's not a top contender, maybe it's a, 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 a first time fighter, sometimes other guys don't take those fights. You know, and sometimes it forces the boss's hand, I guess, to where they have to find these guys a fight. You know, I don't mind welcoming the guys to the UFC. You know, I've done it most of my career. But, um, you know, I, I love the fight. You know what I mean? And eventually, you know, me being the guy to step up to fights, taking fights when other guys won't, I think it'll play in my favor. Some someday down the line, the bosses will probably just out the blue consider me for a title fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm either hoping for that or I fight my way to it. You know, either way, you know, I, I do what I can to help everybody now in the business, and hopefully somewhere down the line they'll, they'll come back and return to help me. And something else you mentioned that, that you and Donald have agreed to bank, but what do you make of that agreement? Because, you know, sometimes you see guys say, I'm going to give well, you a fight of the night, and then he comes in and takes it well, out. Well, you know, everybody has an agreement until they get hit with that first hard shot. Um, you know, everybody's trying to compare me and Donald sparring matches. We sparred hard, but we still never killed each other because we, we were in there to work and not hurt each other. We, we don't get paid to train. We get paid to fight. Um, so, there, I mean, like, he pulled his kicks sometimes. He pulled punches. I pulled punches and kicks. You know, tonight, well, August 11th, they get to be the real deal for the first time for the both of us, you know. We, we, we were sparring partners for three years, but we it's our first time actually fighting each other. So it's, it's not going to be the same as the sparring match. And I, I'm, I'm not the same guy when I spar. You know, when I spar, I'll take a beating. I'll get taken down. I'll give up the takedown in the training room. I don't care. But when the lights are on, I'm the man. Do you expect him to try and take you down at all, though? Yeah, I'm expecting him to. Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, he, he's good. he's got good jiu-jitsu, but I train with great jiu-jitsu fighters. And, 
I've been I've been thrown under the bus the last few months since January. I've been thrown under the bus to some of the best black girls. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard it because we've heard it. Fans say, man, Melvin should just lock himself in a gym for a year and train nothing but jujitsu. What's your response to, to the fans saying that? I'm not a jujitsu fighter. I'm not training for an Abu tournament. I'm not training for Abu Dhabi. I'm an MMA fighter. People don't understand. It's MMA. You know, it's not. You know, everybody gives so much credit to the jujitsu part of it. But nobody's crying and complaining when they're knocking guys out in the first round. You know, um, it's funny you say that because, you know, I, I check my Twitter quite often, you know, and it's weird, you know, and some people screen names just stick out because they have like the funniest or the most dumbest screen name. And it's funny, like leading up to the Kamoas fight, a lot of people were saying, oh, he's going to get choked out, he's a choke artist, blah, 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 he's never going to be anything. And then as soon as I beat the guy, some of those same people, are saying good things about me. So I'm like, dude, you know, it, it's, it's life, man. That's just what it is. People are going to ride the bandwagon. You know, that's just what it is. But for me, it's about going in there and doing what I do best. I didn't I didn't come this long way in the UFC from submitting guys. I got the reputation I got from knocking guys out. That's